Tears of the Kingdom definitely improved upon a lot of things Breath of the Wild did. One of those things were the bosses. A lot of people really didn't like Breath of the Wild's bosses due to them simply all being essentially the same thing, but with different elements. Not really too much creativity there. However, Nintendo actually listened to the fans and went back to having actual unique boss enemies. And I gotta say, they definitely are a step up from the last game. But just how good are they? Well, might as well make a ranking list to find out. Before we start though, I should make some things clear. First off, I'm only going to be ranking the required boss fights of this game. So, I'm not going to be ranking Hinoxes, Taluses, or stuff like that. Maybe in the future I'll make a list for them, but not today. And second off, these rankings are just my opinion, so if a boss you like ends up lower on the list, just remember, that's just my opinion at the end of the day. It doesn't really mean much anyway. <laughs> Alright, I think that about covers everything, so let's actually get into this now. So, at the bottom of my list, the boss I feel is the worst, is going to be Muktorok. I'm sorry to anyone who likes this fight, but I just don't. As much as I love the little guy's design, I mean seriously, he looks adorable for being like a demon octopus thing. That doesn't change how annoying his fight can be. Okay, so the first phase isn't that bad. He turns himself into this mud shark thing that makes whale noises for some reason. Dang, I expect this type of thing out of Florida or Ohio, but like, not Hyrule. <laughs> anyway, all you need to do is hit him with water, either with a splash fruit or Sidon's water shield attack thingy, then you can go crazy on him. Now that sounds simple enough, right? Well, phase two is what places this fight here at the bottom. Now he will cover the entire arena in mud, making it really annoying to move around. Have you ever played Splatoon without ink resist up equipped? Yeah, this is somehow worse. You can get rid of this crap with water, however he'll just recover the arena almost instantly, so there's really no point in doing it. Also, now in this phase, when you expose him, he'll jump from puddle to puddle, making it very hard to hit him. You pretty much have to guess where he'll land due to how unpredictable his movement is. Now, at the end of the day, Muktorok isn't really a hard fight, he's just really annoying to deal with, especially his second phase. Honestly, this is the only fight in the game I don't really like that much. The rest of the boss fights in this game I find really great. But hey, I guess every boss can't be perfect. So, one of the main enemies you fight throughout Breath of the Wild are the Guardians. They're kind of the standout enemies for that game after all. Tears of the Kingdom had the Constructs, which... I don't find it as cool, but they still are pretty interesting, especially since they can swap different parts to have different attacks, it's really a cool thing. So it would make sense to have a boss base around them, right? Well, there is, the Seize Construct. I mean, there's also the Flex Construct, but like I said, we're only talking about the required fights in this game. The Seize Construct has quite a simple premise. You essentially have a little sumo wrestling match between it and the one you're piloting. To damage it, you simply need to force it into the electric fence surrounding the arena. Oh, where does this sound familiar? So how do you do that exactly? Easy! Just beat the crap out of it! Okay, obviously it's not just that simple. It's not just gonna stand there and take it. As it has an arsenal of Zonai weapons at its disposal to fend you off. Such as cannons, lasers, and punching you as well. I guess that last one wasn't really as after throwing it into the electric fence enough, it'll pull out its General Grievous cosplay, giving it more options to attack you with. All in all, this is a lot of fun. The only complaint I really have with this fight is that the construct armor you control kind of feels really sluggish, making the fight feel a bit slower paced than it actually is. But hey, at the end of the day, this fight is really unique. I mean, you have two robots fighting in a sumo wrestling match in a Zelda game. That's freaking awesome! <laughs> Throughout the Zelda series, I've seen Goma reincarnated as a lot of different things. A spider, a centipede thing, a spider again, and a spider once more. 
So what did the game devs decide to have Goma appear as in this game? You guessed it! A rock spider! Yay! The crystal ma- I mean, the marble Goma, in my opinion, is the easiest fight in the game by far. Now, just because it's easy doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, this fight is actually really fun. Goma is also one of those bosses that has multiple methods of beating it, which I love this sort of things in games. It makes the boss super replayable and so much more fun. In this case, you can go the normal route and use Yunbo to destroy its legs to cause it to topple over so you can hit it in the eye. Or you can go the more risky route and run directly under it and use Ascend to instantly get on top of it. Now, as for its attacks, it doesn't have too much variety in that department. All it really does is throw explosive rocks at you, which can easily be avoided by using rewind on them to throw them back at it, or simply just moving to the side. Well, at least not till the second phase, when it circles you with them, that is. Not really too difficult, but still a lot of fun at the end of the day. You know, I never thought in a million years we would get a Gibdo boss in a Zelda game. But hey, here we are today. Queen Gibdo is in my opinion probably one of the hardest fights in the game. First off, just like the other Gibdos, your attacks will do very little damage against it unless you burn or shock it first, either with Ryuji's lightning or the elemental fruits. To actually topple the thing, however, you gotta do this two times consecutively. Yeah, a whole extra time. They're really up in the ante, aren't they? <laughs> All jokes aside, this can be quite difficult due to how sporadic its movements can be. One tip I could recommend is fusing eyes to your arrows to make hitting the Ryuji Lightning easier. The main method of attack from this thing is creating sandstorms, firing a sand laser, that's kind of weird, and then just flat out charging at you. After being hit enough times with the old bug zapper, it will start summoning other Gibdos out of the columns in the arena. Now, you don't have to break the spawners if you don't want to, but it's highly recommended because if you don't, you're gonna end up getting absolutely swarmed, making it really tough to deal with the queen. This part definitely is pretty annoying. I mean, since when have bosses who summon enemies mid-fight just to distract you been fun? I almost put this fight lower on my list because of it, but I decided not to because it does offer a nice challenge. And I just love the Gibdos redesign in this game so much. Like, they look so awesome now. I'm totally not being biased here. Now, something I should mention that is in Tears of the Kingdom, you can take on any area in whichever order you want. However, this game does kind of nudge the player to go to Rito Village first. Following the game's lead will have you take on the Wind Temple that houses Kolgara. Now, for a first boss, it's actually quite unique as it takes place with you gliding mid-air with a paraglider, all the while it shoots icicles at you from its back. This boss definitely acts as a good tutorial for showing the player how the slow-motion mid-air archery works, as you need to shoot its three exposed segments. However, alternatively, you can gain some height with the wind drafts, get right above it, and dive straight through the ice, destroying the segment instantly. Man, that's just super satisfying to do. And like I said before, I always love when bosses have alternate methods for beating them. Now, of course, just like every other boss in this game, it has a second phase, where it'll start summoning... <gasps> tornadoes? Oh dear god, why'd it have to be tornadoes? Anyway, these can be quite difficult to avoid, as it's kind of tough to tell if you should try to go over or under them to avoid it. I don't know, maybe it's just a me thing. This fight did give me quite a bit of trouble on my first playthrough, as it took me, yes, four attempts to beat. Yeah, I, I really suck. But then again, it could be because I went into this really underprepared with bad armor and only four heart containers. Regardless though, I had a lot of fun with this one. It really sets the stage for how great this game's other bosses are going to be. Too bad the next boss I fought was this annoying shrimp. Like I said earlier, Tears of the Kingdom definitely did a better job with its bosses than Breath of the Wild. And this couldn't be any truer with this game's final boss, Demon King Ganondorf. 
Man, what a great way to wrap up this amazing game. After making your way through the final dungeon, Gloom's Approach, you finally get to face off against this absolute unit. The first phase starts out fairly slow, as Link and Ganon will have a little one-on-one -on -one duel. His attacks are very similar to Phantom Ganon's, with a few new ones added in, such as him greeting Gloom Shockwaves and shooting Gloom Arrows at you. However, he is also able to mimic Link's ability to perfectly dodge in counterattack. This really caught me off guard on my first playthrough. Like, bro, that's my thing! Besides that though, the first phase is mostly here to ease the player into the final battle. You know, kind of similar how Majora's Mask works. But starting with phase 2, this is where the real fight begins. With him flexing the power of his Infinity Stone by transforming into his Demon King form, and gaining that giant HP bar that still gives me OCD. Like seriously, I get that it's supposed to be intimidating to the player, like giant HP bar, but come on man, just center the dang thing! It's not that hard, Nintendo! He'll also summon four phantoms to join him in the ensuing battle, but you really don't have to pay much attention to them, as all your allies who slowly join the fight will be taking care of it. After taking half his HP, Ganon will straight up kill not only his phantoms, but also your allies, leaving you and him for one final showdown. This is where the fight is definitely at its toughest. He will now perfect dodge every single one of your attacks. The only way you can possibly hurt him is by perfectly dodging his counterattacks, which potentially could mean you have to do it twice in a row. So if you haven't mastered the timing on his attacks yet, you're in for one hell of a time. Oh yeah, I also almost forgot to mention, you know, a small little detail. His gloom attacks now permanently destroy your heart containers. This fight's just insane, I swear. They went all out for this. And now, I guess I have to talk about it. For Demon Dragon, I'll be completely honest with you guys, I'm not the biggest fan of this thing. I don't think it's terrible or anything like that, it's definitely an improvement over Dark Beast, but I guess long story short, I kinda feel it's really disappointing. I would go more into it, but I feel like this video would end up being way too long with me ranting on about it. I'll tell you what though. If this video gets 10 likes, I'll make an entire video going over my issues with the Demon Dragon. Besides that though, this final battle is absolutely amazing. I'd even go as far as saying it's one of the best final bosses in the series. Well, that only leaves one contender left for first place. So, by process of elimination, it can only be Phantom Ganon. Yeah, I know this may be a bit of a hot take, putting it higher than Ganondorf, but I'm sorry, this fight is just fantastic, I love it. Even before you actually get to the fight, the game builds it up so well, having you traverse through the ruins of Hyrule Castle, chasing the very obviously fake Zelda. Like, on a side note here, let's be real, who actually believed for a minute this was really Zelda? The second she starts selling Crystal to the Gorons, I'm sorry, it's just super obvious at that point. Anyway, after finally making it to the throne room to confront the imposter, you get to have an epic cutscene with Ganondorf, which is probably one of my favorites in the series. He'll summon Phantom Ganon. Now, if I had to use one word to describe this battle, it would be chaotic. Instead of fighting one singular boss enemy, you have five to deal with. How's that for a challenge? Well, I guess technically most of them will be busy fighting the other sages, but you always could just disable them if you want more of a challenge. Regardless, having so many characters duking it out at once just really makes this entire scene look like a war zone. You really have to focus on which ones are moving into attack, as it's already tricky to do so, due to how odd their movements can be. They'll also constantly switch between weapons mid-fight, forcing you to adapt to their new attacks on the spot. And in the second phase, yes, you knew there was going to be a second phase, one of them will start coating the floor in gloom, forcing your attention on them so the entire arena won't become coated. Altogether, this makes for an absolutely hectic fight, having to focus on multiple targets and adapting to how they fight. I kinda do wish they somehow incorporated the whole Dead Man's Volley thing into this fight, as it's kind of a staple for the Phantom Ganon fights throughout the series. 
But hey, it really isn't too big of a deal at the end of the day. Also, I should mention, the music for this fight absolutely slaps. It just fits so perfectly with all the chaos happening around you. I know many of you might not agree with this fight being at the top of the list, but I just felt this fight was the most fun out of every boss in the game. And also, it's my list, so I can do whatever I want. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know what you guys think of the video and where you would rank each of these bosses yourselves personally. I love hearing from you guys. Like I said before, if this video hits 10 likes, I will start production on the Demon Dragon video going over my opinion of it. So be sure to stay tuned for that video coming up soon. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will be heading out now. See you guys later.